Oh, hello everyone. Uh, hello from the Patent Effect podcast. So we are in Ankara and I have a very distinguished uh, speaker guest today from Colrip from uh, from UK. Hello Anthony. Hi. Um this is Tony Coleman here from Color IP. Yeah. So I pref- uh, you prefer me to uh, call you as Tony, right? Yeah, Tony is fine. Tony is fine and easy, easy. Yeah, right? it's, it's so, shorter. Uh, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, so enjoying these, these Are you days. happy being in Ankara? Yeah, it's very nice. A <laughs> little bit cold, but very, it's good. Very nice. Yeah. Are you sure that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice. <laughs> We're okay. having a good time here. Yeah, Ankara, you know, this is this is a formal state city. Yeah. So, but uh, fine, uh, except the weather. Yeah, I guess it's chilly. So, so uh, Tony, you are coming from the Color IP company. Yeah. So, so maybe maybe we can start to introduce yourself, and then maybe you can introduce the Color IP. Uh, what are you doing in uh, in the daily life in UK? And then I can ask some questions to you. Yeah. So yeah. So as as uh, Mustafa mentioned, I work for Color IP in London. Um, Color IP is a IP strategy valuation commercialization company. Essentially, um, we are, we're quite a small company, but we're part of a larger company called Matheson Square, which is a patent and trademark attorney firm. Um, as I mentioned, we're based in London, and the area that I focus on mostly is IP valuation, and this is for pretty much any company ranging from small startups or early stage companies. To to larger corporates and looking at their intangible assets and how they add value to the company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I can give you an example of some of the sort of valuations that we would typically do. So in many cases, the valuations would be for startups who are looking to raise investment. So they're looking to raise funding, and before they go to investors or VCs, they want to be able to show how much their IP, so their patents or their designs or know-how, is worth as part of the overall value of the company. Exactly. Um, so that's where we come in and we help mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. determine that value with the value range. So in in UK, what is the percentage of uh, your uh, customer segments? Uh, how about the, the patent valuation requests coming from big corporates or TTOs or startups? I would say, to be honest, about 60% is startups or SMEs, so small mm-hmm. to medium mm-hmm. enterprises. There are a few corporates, but as you can imagine, many corporates will have large teams to do this in house. So there are some cases where we where we assist those those particular teams, or we even train those teams in house how to do the IP valuations. Uh, yeah. So the, the, this entrepreneurship or uh, the startup ecosystem in UK is very uh, yeah. mature. So especially in comparison in with yeah. the Turkey. So uh, we are recently talking about the patent valuation for the startup valuation in Turkey. Uh, it's, Starting slowly and slowly, uh, but in UK, as far as I know, there are lots of unicorn companies. Also, yeah, yeah. they have a huge uh, patent portfolio, uh, affecting very positively yeah. for the startup valuation. But in Turkey, it's it's growing. So, uh, I would like to ask a very simple question for you. Yeah. So, Color IP is the expert on patent valuation, but in Turkey, uh, mo- mo- most of the people are most of the people are confusing. Patent evolution and the patent valuation. Could you please explain briefly the main differences, or is there any correlation or any relationship between these aspects? So yeah, that's a, a good point, and actually that's a point I see in the UK sometimes as well, where clients do confuse the really? two. Yeah. So yeah, and sometimes it's not so <laughs> obvious to them what the difference is. So essentially, the difference is patent valuation is looking at putting a monetary value mm-hmm. onto the patents or whatever IP asset it might be. And that's all, always in a range of values. And as we discussed over the last few days, there's a few methodologies to develop that. Patent evaluation is looking more at the, the patent itself and how it relates to, it, to how important the technology might be, how important it might be for the, the particular sector, how you might commercialize that particular IP. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't really have so much to do with the the actual monetary value of the patent itself. But that, that said, you still need to take that evaluation into account in the valuation. Exactly. It's it's sort of like a, when you're doing the due diligence as part of the IP valuation, the evaluation will be will be used as part of that due mm-hmm. diligence. So can we say that patent evaluation results 
would, would be would be a very valuable input for the patent valuation. Exactly. They, they would be the say one of the first steps you do exactly. before you value the patent. Exactly. Exactly. For uh, our most of the most of the listeners are coming from the startups. Also, they are caring about uh, how can we evaluate our patents that will be impact on the startup valuation before any VC investment. Uh, yes, in Turkey there are lots of uh, startups having some of the patents uh, granted patents in their portfolio as an asset. Uh, what do you suggest for the startups uh, who are uh, before the NEVC investment? So you mean before they've received investment and before they have revenues or? Be, yeah, or maybe pre-revenue or just starting uh, just, getting some revenues. Okay. So I think when it comes to trying to do, say, from a evaluation point of view, I would say, first of all, be realistic in terms mm -hmm. of your the market share you can get. So what we often do is, if we're looking at the, say, a future income approach of the valuation for these sort of companies, we will look at the potential revenues they could earn in the, the first few years, but being very conservative in terms of the, mm -hmm. the portion of the market they could get, mm -hmm. and then also being quite, um, say, conservative when it comes to the, the discounting we might add, because then eventually this gives a, a more conservative value that they, you know, to, for those potential assets. And obviously, if they can get higher than that when they actually start earning revenues, that's that's better. But mm -hmm. we would always always say be realistic and conservative, because I have seen some cases where companies see the addressable market and assume straight away that they'll mm -hmm. they'll address all of that market, and that's not realistic. And VCs are also aware of that, so you need to, need to be to be realistic, and then also set realistic milestones. So that might involve getting a certain number of clients in year one growing that in year two, expanding your market as you go ahead, and then also um, taking into account, you know, additional re re research costs or other costs that might be incurred along the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as I uh, noticed in Turkey, some of, um, not some of, most of the startups uh, having their patent assets uh, on their the co-founders. Co co-founders belong to the patent applications. And when they come to the VC investment, VCs all, always or usually ask them, uh, assign your IP rights to from the co-founders co to the companies to evaluate as a company assets. Yeah. What do you think about it? I think they should Is do it a that. Good, good, yeah. good perspective, right? We always say that as well when we're mm -hmm. talking to... Also because when you're, talk, when you're looking at the valuation, if you're looking at valuing the, the IP in the context of the company, if it if that IP doesn't really belong to the company, mm -hmm. then it it creates some potential problems. Yes. So you could imagine that in a, in a future date, if for whatever reason the the founder or co-founders decide to leave or are are kicked exactly. out if it's, it's if it scales problem. up, then there's a there might be, there may be a, quite a big issue in terms of ownership of the, of the IP, and what actually happens mm -hmm. when that IP is a uh, and also transferred. It, it, it's sometimes the same uh, aspect in in in, in the universities. If this startup is a spin-off company, yeah. uh, founded by the by the researchers from the university, and the IP belongs to the university, and in that case, uh, if we are in the case of uh, any VC investment, also they ask to to university, please assign your IP rights to the spin-off company to make this realistic yeah. startup spin-off valuation. So yeah, I think that's that would be ideal. It, to be honest, I think it depends on the university because you have some larger universities mm -hmm. which have large, um, say, commercialization hubs or commercial commercialization units mm -hmm. who would, might be less willing to do so. Yeah. So it really depends on the university and the context. And in some cases, those sort of uh, commercialization parts of university can assist the, um, the, the startup in actually setting up and really getting its product on the market mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, they're... They're very experienced in that sector, mm -hmm. but yeah. So, uh, what do you think about, or what do you suggest mm -hmm. to the technology transfer offices who are uh, trying to um, create a valuation of their IP rights in their patent portfolio? Should they should they think this valuation aspect in terms of one particle of patents, or should they create a patent portfolio to protect a single product? 
So in, in Turkey, we are in the growing stage as the technology transfer offices, and then we have some particle, uh, particular uh, patents, not patent portfolio or not yeah. patent clusters indicating a, a one product. Yeah. So maybe we can suggest to the universities to create patent portfolios to protect one product or uh, more than one product. Yeah, I think, I think that's... I think that's generally a better approach. And also from the, I'd say when we typically do valuations, it's usually of a portfolio. Portfolio, or not a single patent, right? Yeah, it may be a family, uh, maybe, but, but yeah. rarely yeah, a single patent because it, it can be very difficult to, unless the patent has a, it can be clearly assigned to one, say one product, mm -hmm. which clearly generates a particular it revenue. Depends. But yeah. I would say generally you, you should try to expand it to a cluster of patents mm -hmm. or patent mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. Again, that would probably depend on the technology. Exactly. So uh, in, in Color IP, you are also dealing with uh, patent landscaping yeah. uh, facilities, right? Yeah, so we do quite a lot of patent landscaping, um, say prior art searching. Mostly for the corporates? Um, no, actually quite a mix, I would mix. say. We also do, say, um, some invention disclosure searching. So basically for universities or early early stage companies so basically to to double check their idfs before they start start looking at the potential of patenting mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. those idfs or not before before uh, accepting to the patent portfolio so you yeah. mean that invention assessment right exactly yeah so so we do quite a lot of that for a few universities and other uh, other companies mm -hmm. and um that's interesting because you also get exposed to quite a quite a few interesting technologies along the way um so yeah, we, we do quite a lot in terms of patent searching and also helping um, some clients look for potential licensees mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if they have a technology they, they want mm -hmm. to license. And they, you know, the, the kind of searching comes in quite useful in that respect as well. So uh, as a global, uh, global perspective, what do you think about the growing of a China in terms of the patent applications? Or do you have any Chinese uh, clients? Um, we we have some activity in China, but I would say it's one we're trying to grow mm -hmm. more than the, more than we are actually active now. In, in my own uh, say experience and opinion, in the past China was say it was hard to be sure how how serious you could take the number yes. of the applications because uh, as I'm sure many are aware that th there were incentives from the government in the past to file applications, which resulted in many. Say less valuable valuable applications being filed. I think now, however, because of the changes in the, in that sort of approach and the growth of many very large Chinese companies, you can't simply ignore mm -hmm. China or Chinese yeah, patents anymore. And you know, as you, as I'm sure many are aware, in in many um, industries, China could be even the main market or the mm -hmm. the main um, the main the main focus area for certain technologies. So. It's definitely not one to ignore anymore. I hope in the in the next near future uh, we can say the same words for the Turkey Turkish companies who are trying to uh, exploit in the in the, in the different uh, markets and territories in the world. So we have some of companies, yeah. uh, big companies, They're already quite mostly large. in the home appliances. Yeah. You know, uh, from uh, from the cases they are exploding their uh, expanding their facilities ex activities in other countries with using their patent portfolios. Yeah. It is growing, but uh, these, these companies are uh, have a vision to create a value from their patent portfolio, getting some licensing revenues uh, in different countries. Yeah, I think that's a, an approach that's worked pretty well for many companies. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it definitely makes sense for them to do that. And I could say as well, like in terms of, from what I've seen from the, say, the Turkish IP sector, it seems pretty going pretty well. So mm -hmm. pretty advanced. It's and actually in some cases more effective than than many yeah, other places in exactly. Europe. So Tony, thank you so much. You're it's a good conversation with you. Yeah, uh, I'm really happy to to match uh, and to stay stay in the same chairs and the table uh, to discuss an IP issues, particularly a global and Turkish uh, aspects. Thank you so much. Thank you very for much your for your valuable information. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. So do, do you want to say something to our podcast listeners um, about your uh, your company yes. last words, let's say? Well, yeah. So as I said, we're, we're based we're based in London. Um, so 
our website is colorlp.com so yes. if anyone wants to have a look on the website and get in touch please do yeah we'll, we'll be for, the, for the corporates for the yeah. technology transfer offices and the startups who are trying to grow in different countries yeah so as i said like we we cover ip valuation strategy searching yeah so pretty much everything from the ip commercialization side of things exactly perfect thank you tony perfect let thank me you. close the session yep okay uh so you can uh, follow our Patent Effect podcast from Twitter and uh, LinkedIn account, the accounts, and also you can listen this episode through the uh, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Please visit our uh, website patenteffect.com. Thank you so much, and then see you on the next episode. <laughs>